2019 for me on mountain bikes has been all about racing. Now, I tend to do one or two races a year anyway, but this year has been pretty good. Earlier on in the year, I did my first ever enduro race. It was an EWS qualifier called the Kingdom Enduro in Lesotho in Southern Africa. So it was pretty wild, pretty out there, but I had an amazing time and maybe I'll do another enduro in the future. The other race I did this year was called the Berg and Bush. It was a three day marathon race in South Africa in October. It was an incredible experience and to get there, I did quite a bit of training and spent a lot of time on XC race bikes, which turns out are a lot of fun. So this year really for me has been pushing my boundaries and exploring the world of racing a little bit more. I haven't worked out what I'm gonna do in 2020 yet, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some fun races there. My 2019 mountain bike highlight was discovering that actually overall, I prefer e-mountain bikes and maybe can't be bothered to ride a mountain bike without a motor anymore. This is gonna upset a lot of you, I'm sure, but for the small amount of mountain biking that I have time to do, where I want to maximize the amount of fun riding I get to do, rather than grinding up hills, e-mountain bikes are where it's at, and I'm looking forward to riding those more next year. I made a video about this explaining my reasons. Look for the link below. Let us know in the comments if you think I'm an idiot. This year I've pushed outside my comfort zone a number of times and my Physique Terra X5 shoes have been there all the way through. They're a mountain bike shoe but I've been riding them on some very long gravel rides and races. A particular highlight for me was racing the Rift gravel race in Iceland and these shoes put up with multiple river crossings and 12 hours in the saddle without my feet really hurting too much. They're really durable and after everything I've done this year, I can still see myself riding with them next year in a load of different events. In May of 2019, I was lucky enough to go to the launch of Shimano's new XT and SLX drivetrains. XT was much anticipated in the mountain bike world. Shimano tends to be quite cyclical in its launching of products, but the release of SLX at the same time, and in particular, the fact that both SLX and XT moved to 12 speed was really notable. I should say I have only ridden the group set at that launch, but SLX really impressed me with its performance. There were some quite subtle differences between XT and SLX, but the overall performance was pretty mind-blowing for what is essentially a budget group set, and it says a lot about how far things have come along in that kind of entry level and budget end of the mountain biking spectrum. I'm looking forward to putting more time on the group set in 2020, but I have to say that if you look at the kind of complete build market now, to have a bike coming with SLX is no bad thing at all. This year I really enjoyed riding the Canyon Neuron CF9. It's the carbon version of their popular trail bike. I found it to be really fun. It's light, it's spacious, it's manoeuvrable, and it picks up speed really quickly. I sometimes find that extra small geometry can be a bit tricky to get right, but Canyon nailed it. They did this by using 650B wheels, which brings the bike into proportion, and they've really fine-tuned the suspension for smaller riders. I hate to use the phrase confidence-inspiring, but that bike had me hurling myself down stuff that I would never be brave enough to do normally. I even attempted a downhill track on it, which I've never done before. Without a doubt, the best mountain bike product I used in 2019 was my Scott Scale Hardtail Long Termer. I've used it for plenty of riding and racing throughout the year, even loads of commuting, and it's held up to whatever I've thrown at it. By today's standard, the geometry is nothing too spectacular. The head angle is 69.5 degrees. The reach isn't too long. The wheelbase isn't too long either. But for all the kind of riding I do, that's lots of marathons with fairly long climbs and not too gnarly descents, it really did the job. One part of the bike which didn't quite work for me was the One Piece Scott ICS Fraser Bar and Stem Combo. The bike was also a great place to try some really cool upgrades. A particular highlight had to be the Schmolka Bars. They weighed just 92 grams and that's pretty terrifying when you're rattling down a descent with just 92 grams of carbon fiber holding you up from certain catastrophe. But again, throughout the whole year, they have not put a foot wrong. But be warned, if you get these bars, the torque values on them are incredibly low, so you need a really accurate torque wrench. I think the brake levers, it's around 1.5 newton meters. But on the whole, I had a great time on the bike and I'm already missing it as it has gone back to Scott. My favorite product for mountain biking from the year 2019 has got to be the Madison DTE all weather trouser, and it is absolutely bomb proof. Recently on my ventures to the Forest of Dean, I managed to get myself into a bit of a heap on the floor, um, but thankfully 
the trousers were completely unscathed. This may have been down to the fact that they have been constructed with a three layer fabric in all the key components that you would need on a uh, mountain bike trouser. Now coming from someone who mostly rides wearing jeans throughout the winter, I must say from the heart, I am really glad I've made this switch. They are exactly what they say on the tin and I'm really happy with them and I'm probably going to continue to use them throughout this winter and the forthcoming winters. This time last year I stood here and said that I was looking forward to riding the Structure SCW1. By far the most interesting bike I rode this year. Now that I have ridden it I can say that the idea certainly seems to have potential. And while I certainly didn't reach the full potential of the bike because I didn't have a huge amount of time on it and because Structure only have mediums at the moment, I certainly was impressed by how that crazy linkage fork performs. It's so much more sensitive than any telescopic fork I've ridden. It really seems to kind of fill in all the holes and flutter over the bumps. And I'm looking forward to riding more linkage fork bikes in future.